All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be going over how to install Docker and Portainer, basically a manager for Docker, on a Raspberry Pi. And honestly, most Docker applications that people are creating and running, for especially like home automation and scripts and everything like that, don't really require that much power. So even though there's not a lot of power in this small Raspberry Pi 4 right here, it's honestly going to be able to run a ton of things that just don't require that much power. And Docker is a great way to get access to a ton of different custom services because it's set up to be run on a lot of different platforms. And it also allows for containerization, which allows you to easily go ahead and say, okay, this is causing an issue. I'm going to kill that without stopping everything else. So there is one limitation I should bring up. Since Raspberry Pi is based off of an ARM processor rather than an x86 processor, there might be some incompatibilities between different containers. Docker does take care of a lot of that stuff, but it's not perfect. And so you might not be able to run everything and you might get some weird errors, but overall, most pretty basic containers should run totally fine and you can start using Docker for all of these things. The other great thing about Docker over a virtual machine is it requires a lot less resources for every single tool. And so that means since you don't have a lot of power or RAM on a Raspberry Pi, it is a lot more efficient to use Docker because you just don't have to waste all this RAM on spinning up a bunch of virtual machines to have different services container off like that. All right, and so the very first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is connect to a Raspberry Pi's terminal. There's basically two different options for this. If you're using Raspberry Pi OS, just log in and start opening up the terminal. And then if you're like me, you can just go ahead and SSH into the Pi, which means I'm currently on my computer screen right here, but I have full access to the Raspberry Pi terminal. And the first thing you always wanna do before starting anything like this is just do a sudo apt update to update your package links. And then if you have anything that needs updating, it might say it here, all packages are up to date, or you could say, hey, there are a few things you need to update, do a sudo apt upgrade. And that'll make sure you're on the latest OS and everything's up to date. That way you don't have to worry about incompatibilities or anything like that. Then to actually install Docker, Docker has made it incredibly easy. All you have to do is run this curl statement and I'll go ahead and show you the site. So this right here is git.docker.com and it's basically, as you can see here, just a bunch of text that is a shell script. So when you run this script that I'm about to show you, it's basically just going to run everything in here and set up Docker for you. The reason I'm bringing this up is, this is docker.com, AKA the people who produce Docker, therefore you can almost certainly trust them. But especially for homebrew projects and things like that, it's not a bad idea to every single time just quickly do a quick glance through the code that you're about to be installing, just because you don't know what it is. And we're gonna be running this as root and so you don't want somebody setting up like a Bitcoin miner on your Raspberry Pi because you ran their script and it secretly is going to send them some money. And so it's a good idea to check these kinds of things first, but it is docker.com, so it's pretty easily trustful. And so once we verified that, now we just have to go through and do it. We're gonna do a curl, which is basically just goes to that site and runs the code, then some SSL, and then that site, it's https colon slash colon get.docker.com. And we're just going to pipe that, which is that line, and we're going to say pipe that into sh for shell. So what this is gonna do is it's going to go to that site we just showed using SSL, and it is going to put everything like that into our shell, and so it's gonna run it. Whoops, I forgot my two front facing arrows in HTTPS. And so now you just kinda of have to sit back and relax. All right, and so now that it's finally done installing, let's just type in Docker. And so right here, we can see we got brought to the Docker documents. And so that means Docker was successfully enabled. So now the one thing we need to do is right now we're acting as root. So we're just going to add the Pi user into the Docker group. Basically, these are just users who are allowed to, to run Docker. And so to do that, it's pretty simple. It is a sudo user mod dash a G to add to group. And then we're going to say which group we want, which is Docker, and then which user we want, which is Pi. So what this is gonna do is it's just going to add the Pi user into the Docker group. And so now the Pi user should be able to run Docker containers without any kind of custom configuration. And so now what we need to do is instead of running everything based off of command line, which you can totally do if you want to, we're going to install what's called Portainer. Portainer pretty much is just a composer for your Docker containers. It's a web GUI that allows you to really easily configure them. 
And so this is actually gonna be our first Docker container pull. And so to do that, we're gonna do a sudo docker pull. And so what that does is it goes to the Docker servers and pulls down the container we're gonna ask for. And it is portainer slash portainer. And it is portainer CE for community edition. And we're going to choose the Linux ARM one because the Raspberry Pi is a Linux ARM based chip. And so what this is gonna do is it's just going to pull the specific community edition for the Linux ARM chip. And it's going to go ahead and install it for us. It's Docker is really easy to go ahead and use. It's super easy with containers and you can just pull stuff on here and it pretty much just works. All we have to do is the very first time we're gonna set it up to start automatically at boot and a couple of other things. But other than that, starting with Docker on a Raspberry Pi and just Docker in general is really easy to learn and can really help you get used to running a lot of different services while also being able to migrate them between devices without too much hassle. All right, and so now we can see we now have this Docker image. And so now to actually start this up and have it run automatically, we've got quite the command. It is a sudo docker run dash d dash p. And then we're going to specify the ports. So basically Docker works as local port, remote port. And so for both of them, you're gonna to wanna to just choose 9000, which is the default portainer port. You probably don't have anything running there, so don't worry about it. And then we wanna give it a name, we'll call it portainer. Then we want it to restart if it ever goes down. So we're going to say dash restart equals always. And finally dash V. And this is where it gets fun. It's var slash run slash docker dot sock. I'm not sure why it's dot sock. And then that again. And if that was not enough, you now have to do it again. And now you have to see another variable. These dash V's are variables and we're going to give it the portainer data. So basically this says, okay, where the portainer data is slash data. And we need to now say which portainer we're running. So it's portainer slash portainer colon Linux arm. All right, so let's quickly go over what this giant, giant mess is. So right here, this says run a new Docker container dash P says which ports to use. So this is the internal external port. So I wouldn't recommend changing those. It'll just get confusing. This gives it a name so we can easily find it within our Docker GUI and then restart always basically says if anything goes down or upon a reboot, it'll automatically start itself up. And then these dash V's are environmental variables. So this one, I actually am not completely sure. It's just in all the documents I read, Hey, you need to add this in here. And then this V for this other variable is just saying, where to stick the environmental variable pertainer data, and that is in the root data folder. And finally, which Docker container we wanna run, which is portainer, the version portainer Linux ARM. And that's it. I'll go ahead and copy this and put it in the uh, description below. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter. And I forgot that it is portainer-ce for community edition. That way it's free. So. That is one, my mistake. So real quick, what I had to do here was since I had already started the container and then I changed the container, there was already a container. So I just had to remove it there. Um, but now we should be running. So now let's go into our web browser. We're just going to go to HTTP colon slash slash raspberry pi dot local and port 9,000. And just like that, we have successfully accessed the Portainer database. We'll go ahead and create a admin. And we'll just go ahead and click create user. And then your choice, I normally disable collecting statistics. I kind of like my David private and you never know what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and click create. So now we've got a few different options. We're going to probably want to use Docker. Ah, that's why we had that portainer command in there for the docker.sock. So it's actually to make sure that it has access to be able to control other containers. So now we're just going to go ahead and click connect. And just like that, we can see all the containers and it's really easy to go ahead and use. We can see the statistics of our Pi and we've got a lot of information on here. We can see there's two images. One of them is the unused one where I accidentally did that pull earlier, where I accidentally downloaded the non-community edition version. So I'm just gonna click it and click remove. 
and it is so easy to go ahead and use. You can set up anything you want on here and it's all very easy to use. And so now say you want to download a new container. What you do is you need the image of it. So you go into images and go ahead and figure out which one you'd like. So let's just go with a basic one. I'm just going to download a hello world image. So you just go ahead and say, okay, I want to pull hello world. And obviously choose whatever containers you'd like, and I'm just going to pull it. And this is really just to show you, hey, this is how you use everything. And so now we can see it right here. And so let's go ahead and go into a container and add a container. And we'll just call this test. And so we'll just go in and say, hello world. And so you can see right here, it already sees it. And so that way it knows, hey, you've already downloaded this image. We've already got it. And so now let's just go ahead and click deploy the container. There's so much more here, but this is all we need to go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and click on it and click start. And so this is not a great one to show. See how it automatically stops itself because it just runs, but we can look through and we can see, hey, look, since it ran, it basically just puts the log and says, yes, we're working. And that is an easy way to test it out. There's so much you can do here, and I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more tutorials in all of this, but go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make, especially Docker ones, in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.